So the first thing is a lot of people who are new to machine learning are like, okay, well, what is it all about? Well, I know I'm going to have lots of data. Uh, but the thing is, it's really hard in the middle. I'm going to have to, you know, like pull, remember all my statistics stuff. Or if I don't have any kind of statistics or mathematical background, it's going to be really hard. And then whatever happens at the end, it's going to be pretty magical, right? So while this is, you know, a somewhat true idea of what machine learning is, a, a little bit more of an accurate model looks something like this, where, where you know data is involved and you know you're going to have to, like, collect it. And then what I don't have in between, which is really important, is cleaning it and then organizing it once it's cleaned. And then you create this thing called a model. So we'll talk about that on the next few slides. And then use machines to kind of like make this, you know, to, to flesh out the model or to sort of like make it better and better. And then finally, you can deploy this model and then you can use it to make predictions on new data. So this is more likely what, what ML is. It's not, you know, like I said, it's not too far off from this, but there's really, there shouldn't be as much guessing here. There shouldn't be as much you know, wondering like, what, what is this magic, okay? It is not magic, it is you're actually doing a lot of machine work or having machines do a lot of work for you to make it seem like magic, okay? So in order to have, uh, you know, to be successful at machine learning, you have to have a lot of data. You know, obviously if you only have two pictures of a cat and one picture of a dog, you know, that model is probably not gonna be that good. But if your model has seen 10 million dogs and 10 million cats, uh, then chances are much better that your model is going to be accurate. So large data sets tend to lead to good models. Of course, if you have a large data set and you know, all these examples are not so great, then maybe your models won't be great either, right? It's kind of like garbage in, garbage out type of thing. And then you need to have a lot of computation to actually build those models sort of in a time frame that's acceptable as a human and as a developer. Okay. So uh, for example, if you were to work on you know, uh, detecting activity, uh, you know, like someone standing or walking, you may write some code that looks like this. If 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 they're going less than four miles an hour, uh, they're probably walking. If it's zero, they're probably standing still. Um, and then if, you know, people are moving faster, then maybe you will change your, you know, upgrade your code to if it's greater than four, maybe they're running or jogging. Uh, and then if they're moving significantly faster, like maybe more than 12 miles an hour, maybe, you know, maybe they're on a bike. And if they're moving faster than 30 miles an hour, they're probably in a car. Right, so these are activities that you kind of write some code uh, to try and figure out. Uh, you know, so these are like activities. Uh, one activity that's a little bit more difficult is golfing. So what do you do here? Because you're not moving at any particular speed. You could be moving at zero miles an hour, which means you're standing still. You can be moving at two miles an hour, which means you're kind of like walking to the next hole. Um, you're not doing any of these things. Okay. Um, but you know, I can't really use speed to be able to determine whether I'm playing golf or not, right? So the certain things are a little bit more difficult to do. So maybe instead of measuring speed, maybe you wanna take uh, an image of people who are walking or standing still, or people who are running, or people who are biking and people who are golfing. Then maybe you'll have a better chance of making a, a guesstimate as to what kind of activity a human is doing. Okay, so that's kind of an example, uh, seeing these rules and passing in data is an example of the traditional uh, type of programming, right? You have logic, which is, you know, the rule, uh, and then you pass in data and based on, you know, whatever logic you have, and then the data that's passed in, you get some answers out of it, okay? So that's kind of like traditional programming. However, with machine learning, it's, it's going to be a little bit different because you need to have some of those answers to help you uh, flesh out that model or the rules. Right, so you need to have existing answers uh, along with the data, uh, and then output something that you can use to help you with new data. Okay, so machine learning is it you know, requires just a little bit of tweaking your thinking uh, to sort of like wrap your head around it better. Okay, so for example, again, uh, instead of measuring speed, maybe I'm going to take a picture of somebody walking. So I, you know, obviously encode it in a binary way, and I'll just say that is a human walking. And then I have another image of somebody running, and then I'll, I'll say that is an example of a human running. And then similarly for biking, and then golfing kind of, right? Because golf has lots of different things, a lot of different activities within the one sport. And so you may have to take a lot of different images of all the different things that you would do if you were golfing, okay? All right, so, uh, so anyway, so we have uh, the answers and data uh, going into machine learning and generating our set of rules, which is the model. So that is what is called training phase. Once you have trained enough, you know, with enough data and you're fairly confident with your rules, you would basically have a validation set or a test set 
to sort of like enforce or to validate the fact that your model is working. And then what you can do is you can move down to the inference phase, which is the predict or the predictive phase. And that's where you pass in new data. You ask your model, hey, what is this person doing? Or, you know, uh, you know, what is what should the output be based on the previous data that I've seen before? So inference and predictions, that's what you do afterwards.